straight ahead on 12 News, the busiest they've been in years, how the boat business is taking off. Then a look back at what's changed. We revisit the tornado that tore through a section of Golden Valley three years ago. But first, what was happening to cars that broke down along a highway? 21 years I've been here, this is the largest auto theft case I've been involved with. 12 News starts right now. A St. Paul man is accused of selling stolen cars that had been parked along area highways. Police say he targeted cars that had broken down or just ran out of gas. Police say 50-year-old James Jennings used a tow truck to take dozens of cars from West Metro highways, including Brooklyn Park, Plymouth, and Robbinsdale. We have uh, recovered uh, 50 stolen cars that we know he took. Uh, we have about another 100 vehicles that we're looking into that fit the same pattern. Coon Rapids police say this video shows Jennings at work with a flatbed tow truck. In a matter of minutes, he loaded up a car that was parked along a freeway off-ramp. Nobody driving by could tell anything was wrong. By all accounts, he just drove around during the day looking for um, abandoned vehicles, broken down vehicles along roadways and within a few minutes he could load up the car with his flatbed tow truck and drive away with it. Sometimes a day or two later uh, a victim would get back with uh, you know parts of their vehicle or gas or whatever they needed only to find that their car was gone. The criminal complaint says Jennings sold 143 vehicles to a metal salvage company in Anoka this year alone. Police say the salvage company is cooperating with their investigation. Jennings was arrested after a police bait car parked alongside a street was stolen. Police say he had their car and another one on the tow truck when they caught up with him. Well, the stolen cars have all been crushed and recycled, but police would like to find out who the owners are. So if you lost a car that had been left along a roadway, you're asked to call Coon Rapids Police, 763-767-6528. Robbinsdale's former police chief has pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor prostitution charge. Steve Smith was arrested last February during a prostitution sting in Coon Rapids. He resigned from his police chief job a month later. Smith will not serve jail time. Instead, he will be placed under supervised probation for one year and must complete a prostitution offender program. The search continues for a fifth day at the Maple Grove home of Amy Sue Paniak's parents. Maple Grove Police, the FBI, and Hennepin County Sheriff's deputies are searching for clues at the home where Amy Sue has been missing since 1989. Investigators have been working nonstop since they executed a search warrant at the home Sunday morning. Earlier this week, police said they expected the search to be complete by Friday, Thursday, Maple Grove Police Captain Keith Terlinden said the search may last now through the weekend. Hutchinson Technology is closing its manufacturing plant in Plymouth as part of a plan to cut costs. The company is also cutting 100 jobs in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal reports Hutchinson will close the Plymouth plant by September 28th. Most of the workers will be moved to the city of Hutchinson. And the cost cutting comes as Hutchinson Technology expects growth in demand for its products later this year. Hutchinson makes precision parts for computer disk drives. Well, the recession that pretty much sunk the boat business now shows signs of recovery. Nowhere is that more apparent than at local boat shops. On the eve of the unofficial kickoff to summer, reporter Shannon Slatton explains how they're busier than ever. Now we finally have blue sky, white puffy clouds, and 70 degree weather. I think the lakes are going to be busy this weekend. After a winter that packed quite a wallop. The weather did make a difference. I'm, I'm glad I'm out here today. There's no better sight than a beautiful day on the lake. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And what better way to take it all in but by boat? Actually, my motor rebuilt, so I had to run the boat a little bit today. But it was a, a nice day to do this, not crowded, not too many waves. Everyone wants a boat right now. Whether people are buying for the first time or trading one in, right now the boat business is a busy one. Back in 2007, 8, 9, when the housing market crashed, our business did. And now steadily we are seeing an increase in business. We're washing boats in one bay, they're rigging boats in another, getting them ready for customers to go out. Sorensen says the sales floor usually has upwards of 70 boats. Right now they have 55. Increased demand means it's tough to keep the sales floor full. This week 
has been absolutely fun, crazy, stressful, all of it in one. Behind the scenes at Rapid Marine, it's also been busy. He's putting batteries in it, trolling motor, depth finders, and then he's going to run it up and then we'll clean it and this will go out uh, sometime later today or early tomorrow morning. A quick turnaround for mechanics as they get the boats out of storage and ready to go. Our season really kicked off opening week. Um, people wanting their boats, weather finally turning. We do new used and storage, so kind of the perfect storm happened when the weather changed. Everyone wanted their boat. Managers expect to stay busy until July, hoping that as the weather turns hot, business will keep sizzling too. We finally got blue sky, white puffy clouds, and 70 degree weather. We want to be on that water. In Rogers, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. Another factor that may be driving business is the cost of boats. Manufacturers want to reach more people, so they're now producing more boats at lower price points. Republican candidate for Governor Kurt Zellers of Maple Grove announced his running mate choice today. The former House Speaker selected former State Representative Dean Simpson. Simpson is a grocery store owner from Purim. He served three terms in the House. Zellers is one of five Republican candidates vying to challenge incumbent DFL Governor Mark Dayton. The allure of the Wyzetta School District and new homes continues to drive a building boom in the northwest part of Plymouth. The city's planning commission took up four different housing proposals this week. Lennar Corporation plans to build 25 homes in a development called Brockton East. Meanwhile, Pulte Homes plans to put in two large developments. One plan called Enclave on the Greenway consists of 128 single-family homes near Troy Lane. The other calls for 130. 39 homes north of the Plymouth Gun Club in a development named Aspen Hollow. And finally, there's a proposal for 27 homes off of Vicksburg Lane. The Plymouth Preserve proposal calls for luxury homes in the $600 to $900,000 range. Coming up, remembering the tornado that touched down three years ago in our area. How a Golden Valley neighborhood came back stronger than ever. Then, later in sports, the Breck Boys tennis team plays for a spot in the state tournament. But first, talk about a day to head to the lake. Friday looks perfect. It was three years ago today that deadly tornadoes touched down in North Minneapolis and in Golden Valley. Although time has passed, residents affected by the storm say it is something they'll never forget. Though much has changed in three years. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us how one Golden Valley neighborhood got back on its feet. It was like a, a bomb went off. The North Tyrell Park neighborhood was hit hard by the storm. Just amazing how powerful it was. Sarah Dodge says, Yeah, just devastated it all. It was horrible. It's a day she'll never forget. It jumped the freeway, kind of cut through the neighbor's yard there and up and over the hill. The twister toppled trees in her yard. Which was just insane. Small plants now cover the spot where tall trees once stood. Trees used to block our view completely from the houses over there. It was absolutely stunning. Brad Peterson lost about a dozen trees in his front yard. The trees were blown up. Everything was blown uphill. He's still trying to replace some of those lost trees. This one just looks bare. It's, it's I don't know. The storm also did major damage to North Tyrell Park, where dozens and dozens of trees were destroyed. The whole lowlands over there were just filled with trees that are that's a barren landscape comparatively. All of the playground equipment and stuff was, was really beaten up pretty badly. But the neighborhood was much stronger than the storm. They came together to rebuild the park. They raised over $24,000 to plant new trees. The neighborhood has remained strong. Neighbors really banded together. It was, it was good. Residents say it was important to rebuild this park. The trees are beautiful. We were happy to have the trees. Because it's been a popular gathering place for years. The park's been such a foundation of just all of our kids growing up together and neighbors knowing each other. It's, it's where we all met when our kids were little. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, 12 News. The city of Golden Valley got a small grant to replace a few trees in the park. Meanwhile, money from the neighborhood fund was also used to improve the park trail. Well, coming up, we head to Park Center to meet this week's standout student. But first in sports, get set for fishing this Memorial Weekend with a tip from Terry Tuma. John Jacobson is in next. 
Well, everyone expected Breck to be tough in tennis, and uh, they proved they are, and now it's on to state, and hopefully they can stay tough. A state tournament qualifier, yeah, they'll be heading there next, uh, next month. While there are no sure things in prep sports, let's just say it would have been a surprise if Breck's boys tennis team didn't win a section title this year. The Mustangs taking on Fridley in the Section 5A final. Breck's Austin Wong is in the far court at number one singles. He gets to the net for a volley and then hammers an overhead on the way to a win over Fridley's Luke Prosser. Two second singles, Lewis White of Breck facing Jack Fight. They trade forehands before White comes to blast a forehand winner. He takes the match for the Mustangs. Breck receiving serve at number one doubles play. Good hands at the net by Prashant Gadashala will win the point. Gadashala and Justin Kang take the match. Breck breezes past Fridley 7 0. The state tournament begins June 3rd. For some softball teams, the season will end this week in section play, while others will play on after Memorial Day. Cooper meeting Hopkins in the second round play in section 6-3A, bottom of the first. Hopkins' Lauren Fegler ripping a grounder inside third. Aaron O'Neill hustles around to score, and the Royals draw first blood. Bottom of the third, Fegler launches a shot to the fence. That plates another run and starts a big inning for the Royals. Haley Dan Hartog's drive to the gap, scores Jessica Krauser and Laura Clements and puts Hopkins up 6-0. And then Hartog comes home on the hit by Sally Guthrie. Hopkins leads 7-0 after three. Bottom of the fourth inning, Krauser's hit up the middle, scores O'Neill, and this hit makes it 10-0 Royals. That's the final, Hopkins beats Cooper in five. Royals are playing Wyzetta today, Thursday. Cooper is still alive in the loser's bracket, as are Armstrong and Benild. Armstrong boys lacrosse team has suffered three one-goal losses this spring. The Falcons met a Maple Grove team Wednesday that had won seven of their past eight games. This one's tied 1-1 in the second quarter when Armstrong's Jonah Borwick skips a shot off a Crimson defender and in for a goal. It's 2-1 Falcons. Maple Grove's Jake Wilson is having a great season. He fights off a defender, has a high shot that goes into the Falcons net for a goal, tying it at two. Less than 30 seconds later, Wilson passes to Hunter House. He turns and scores. Maple Grove nets three goals in the final 70 seconds of the first half to take a 4 2 lead. Borwick becomes Armstrong's all time leading scorer in this game, netting five points, including an assist there on L.A. Olson's goal that makes it 5 5. And then midway through the fourth quarter, Olson scores. It turns out to be the game winner. Armstrong wins a one goal game for a change. A beat rival Maple Grove 7 to 6. This is a team that we look forward to. We circle this on the schedule every single season. And it's a, it's a fight to, to get here. It's a fight on the field. And, and afterwards, uh, you know, with the win that we had last season and this season, it's, it's pure joy and bliss. I like that. Joy and bliss. <laughs> the bass opener in Minnesota is this weekend. It's a perfect time to launch our 24th season of summertime fishing tips with pro angler Terry Tuma. Here's Terry with his first tip of the season. Welcome to another series of summer fishing tips right here on Channel 12. We all know that the bass opener is taking place very shortly, in fact, this weekend. And there's been so many questions. Where are the bass going to be? We all know it's a very late temperature season as far as water temperatures and of course the late spring that has an effect on where these fish are going to be. On some lakes it's going to be uh, post-spawn, spawn and pre-spawn in that series if you will, starting out with uh, pre-spawn first and then spawn and then uh, post-spawn. So we're going to have to do a little bit of searching. They may not be where they were last season. Some great ways to catch these fish. One is going to be uh, don't be afraid to start out with a spinner bait. Just check quickly and then spinner baits and then uh, definitely going with uh, crank baits and then if we have depending on the weather condition going with plastic. You can go with a Texas rig. You can go with uh, wacky worm. Tube jigs are good. So we're going to have to do a little bit of experimentation but if you do that work this versatility factor you are going to catch fish. Have a great opening bass and we'll talk to you next week right here. Thanks Terry and Terry's tips will be seen every Thursday here this summer, spring and late spring, early summer, all summer. He's back. Channel 12. Yeah, <laughs> he's back. That's what I meant to say. Thanks Don. <laughs> Still ahead, a standout student who specializes in the good kind of drama. Meet a Park Center student who excels in theater and a whole lot more when we come back.
spring has sprung and one local group is hoping to spruce up its downtown, but they need help from the community to do so. The Robbinsdale Beautification Club is seeking donations for an annual project which places hanging flower baskets throughout the city's downtown. The group needs to raise at least $2,500 to pay for the baskets and the watering. People were coming to downtown Robbinsdale that had never been here before because of Willette. And now that we're on the national stage with uh, Travail and Pig Ate My Pizza, we have a chance to shine. If you are interested in donating, we'll have more information on our website, 12.tv. Any extra funds that they raise will be saved for that project next summer. This week's standout student is a talented, creative type. You can't typecast this Park Center senior, though. He contributes in many arenas. Sam, give us a B-flat. It's fitting we find Park Center's Sam Melby in band. If it's music and arts related, this senior usually plays a leading role. He's been in every musical ensemble that the band has offered and has also doubled over into choir. So he's one of the few kids here at Park Center that's really gotten a taste of every kind of music that we have. When Park Center stayed Shrek for its spring musical, you don't even know me. Sam put his own spin on the part. With theater, you get to create a character, and that's what I really enjoyed about it, especially this year with the lead role. And I, I got to make it my own. Not, I didn't get to take it and say, oh, I'm the best at this, but I got to make it a little bit, a little bit of me was put into that performance, and that's what I really like about like art, the arts, especially in a school where you have a good theater program like this. Nearly a straight-A student and leader at his school, Sam serves as captain of the math team and president of National Honor Society. He floats from, from group to group well. He transitions from social circles very well. Um, and that's something that can't be said about a lot of high schoolers. It's a passion to create that fuels this 18-year-old. His dream for the future is to be a documentary filmmaker and produce stories that resonate. I want to film the stories that are happening in everyday life for people because if you have a film about that people can realize that maybe they're not the only ones going through something and then they can come closer together with other people around them that have that and I think that it can actually bring society closer together. This fall Sam will attend Columbia College in Chicago and he plans on studying film. So film. Film, that's right, wants to be a filmmaker. <laughs> that does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay with us. Community Corner is coming up next and we'll see you again tomorrow beginning at 4 o'clock.